hello and welcome to Worth the War. My name is Kimmy. I am really excited to start this new series of introductions of people who work hard in the love and relationship arena. And today I'm extremely excited about having Victor Granville, who will be sharing from his great repertoire of things that he covers. He does things about trauma in your past, marital, sexual, and emotional relationships. He talks about how to attract people who will actually make your chances of finding a healthy love better and, and a lot of other things as well. And he's very interesting. So I'm excited to introduce him to you, and we're really excited to have him to be here with us today. And welcome, Victor. Hi there, Kimmy. Really, really good to be here. So thank you for inviting me. Uh, I really do enjoy what we're about to get into. <laughs> I, I can tell that you really do. I, I want to just ask you, tell us a little bit about what inspired you to go into the love and relationship area. What do you love the most about it? Well, the, the, the short story is that I've always had a deep interest in love and relationships, um, why relationships are, aren't working and, you know, we're here together and, you know, why can't we get along when I look outside and see so much conflict and disharmony and disunity between um, love relationships. And I was just curious as well, it's just that what needs to happen so there can be deeper connection, deeper interest, me, deeper understanding. Now, of course, I've also had my coming from a home where there's been abuse and been trauma and a lot of fear that I've had to grow through and work through and heal so that I could be ready for a, um, a healthy, loving relationship. And so part of my own work has inspired me in this area as well. Growing through the years doing this work, I really know that it's been a, a divine calling, a divine mandate for me to be in this space, to bring awareness, to help people connect back to their heart so that they can share love and uh, invite real loving experiences into their life. What, where do you see yourself in five years? In five years is a really interesting question because in the past, I would normally just jump into all these things that I want around me. Um, in the physicality, material things. But as the years go on, I find that I really place a much deeper value on the internal. I really, in five years' time, I want to be more compassionate with myself, even more loving with myself, more connected with myself, and more in joy. So as long as I'm connected and experiencing these things, I, am, I have it all, in my opinion. Um, and saying that, I do want to be um, creating academies and resource centers for people who are really devoted to doing their healing work and wanting to bring in healthy love and, and what that actually means. You know, this type of um, education is missing from mainstream curriculum, in my opinion. And so I want to be able to fill that gap and provide a a place where people can get educated and there's many things people get educated about you know driving uh, marriage days um, but not how to do conscious relationship totally totally agree with that um, if, if you were to look at the landscape of love and relationship what would you say the number one obstacle is for people finding healthy love Great question. And through, through my work, and this is what I've experienced and what I've discovered is that one of the major reasons why relationships are failing and why people are struggling to create healthy relationships is because there's a number of reasons, but the main one is they're making other people responsible for themselves. So making other people responsible for their sense of lovability, for their sense of enough and adequacy, for mm -hmm. their sense of unworthiness, uh, and they're allowing other people to define them and making other people their source of love. And so when they're doing this uh, and making other people responsible for this, then what happens is they need to have control over the other person to get the love that they think they need or to get the validation that they think they need or to feel worthy and lovable. Uh, they need to control the other person in order to get that from them. And so once they're doing that, what they're creating is struggle, control patterns, struggle issues, and the other person's likely doing the same, making the other person responsible for them and to fill them up with love. And so what you have is two people just creating, um, trying to get the other person to do what they're not doing for themselves. You cannot give what you have not to share. So that's a major problem. So until people begin to really do their own inner work, to really look at their own false beliefs that block them from loving themselves, then they won't be able to have the love inside in order to share with a partner. So this is this is really, really, really big issue. That makes a lot of sense. Do, do you feel when we look at the shifts in the culture when it comes to love and relationship, do you feel like some of the things like social media or online dating, that those things have made those problems smaller or bigger? Again, I, I believe that 
I look at the underlining issues. So I, I see these things as tools. And unless you're still doing the inner work, because you can be offline, you can be online, but you still need to be coming from a whole place in order to create what you want to create in terms of healthy relationship. And so I, there's, there's not much that I want to attribute to the cause of where we are in relationship because of these tools, but it's still the way in which we are thinking about love and relationship. And a lot of that has to do, for me, a lot of people are abdicating responsibility for themselves. They're not doing the work because they believe that their best feelings come from outside of themselves. They believe other people are supposed to make them happy. They believe other people are supposed to be responsible for them. And so they're making a lot of expectations of the others and burdening a lot of others with things that they should be taking care of themselves. And this is what creates the problem. Right. It seems to me like that goes right along with my hypothesis that rethinking love is really what we need to do if we want to avoid a lot of these pitfalls. We can't keep doing what we've been doing right. and expect a different result. Absolutely. Right. And I love the work you do. It's amazing. I appreciate <laughs> that. It's fun to meet up with people who have as much of a passion as you do. I love it. What do you wish that someone had told you? This might be a little more personal than theoretical, but what do you wish someone had told you before you <clears throat> entered into that arena? Do you think that there was something, or if you had a child right now, and I don't know if you have children, Victor, but if you had a child, what would be the, the number one thing you would be telling them? I would guess there's someone similar yeah i mean similar would be just uh, i i wish someone had told me that i cannot i'm not responsible for somebody else's happiness mm -hmm. um that it's not my job it's not my job to be the one that makes you happy i can contribute to your happiness i can participate in, in, in supporting your joy but it's not my responsibility. And I know that in my past, I've, I've often tried to be responsible for the people that I've engaged with for their happiness. And um, it didn't work out. <laughs> it didn't work out. Yeah, that's perfect. I love how you say that. I, I'm, I can support your joy. I can contribute yeah. to your joy. I can't be the cause and the root cause because that, yeah. that is, that's it's the way we look at our lives, isn't it? Right, right, yeah. And so if I'm not happy, if you're not happy, it's my fault. What, have I, what am I not doing right? What am I doing wrong? And then I start to do all these, give myself up, people please go along with things that I don't want to go along with. This creates relationship problems. And, you know, no matter how much I'm loving, no matter how much I'm caring uh, for my partner, if they're not loving themselves, then what I'm giving to them will not land deep enough. They will not be able to take it in deep enough for themselves and they'll still feel empty. They'll still feel unhappy. They'll still feel they need more. And then it turns into a love addiction or a connection addiction or approval addiction, or they're trying to get what they're not giving to themselves from me. And then I'm participating by doing that. So we get into some really unhealthy relationship system. That is, that's a great, that's a great summary there. I think that's something that we can all really grab onto the idea of that addiction in the beginning, it is all rosy, but you do have these under pulling things and that would be an addiction would be a great way to to put that what is one thing and this is a complex question what is one practice or one thing that you could tell your clients that would help them from becoming a victim of intimate partner violence or IPV, domestic violence, however, however you use that. Yeah. And, and that really is for me to learn about what it truly means to love yourself at a very core, deep level. And, uh, and I'm not talking just about bubble baths and going to the spa and which are important, but I'm talking about deeper things such as your emotions, taking care of your emotional integrity if you like and that means you being the one that is here to validate yourself first you being the one that is taking responsibility for defining yourself as worthy as lovable as enough because if you're not doing that and you're handing authority over to others to do that then you are leaving yourself susceptible to join in uh, low frequency relationships, people who are also abandoning themselves and trying to uh, make you responsible for filling them up. And so it, it is very important that you're loving yourself so that you are operating at a complete different frequency. So you're not attracting you're attracting people at a higher frequency who are also loving themselves, who are also caring about themselves, who are also valuing themselves. And then you find resonance with those people. And so that's why it's important. Also, um, when you're loving yourself, you're very attuned into your own energy and you're then also in tuned, in tuned to other people's energy. And so you'll be able to pick up very quickly people who are coming from an empty place, people who are coming from a self-abandoning place. 
people who are operating out of unhealthy behaviors. And so then you will know how to create loving boundaries and limits on getting deeper into that. In fact, you will keep it moving, in fact, as a way of self-love and self-care for yourself. So it really is that. Um, yeah, that's a great answer. I think that, I think you hear the sound bite of that, but it, it just doesn't resonate until you, you stretch it out and you say, yeah. basically, if you're basically abusing yourself, you're going yeah. to attract people who agree with you. Yes, I like that. Yeah, you're going to yeah. attract people who agree with you. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I think really well put and, and well yeah. done. And I think that if, if nothing else, you know, we could get into the hands of kids, this idea that like you say, you call it an energy of the ability to set boundaries, the ability yeah. to know what is good for you. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's what I mentioned. One of the goals is to create this uh, resource center where people can learn about how to do the deep, deep work of truly loving yourself beyond just this good idea of, yeah, self-love is a good idea. Let, well, how do you do that? And how do you make that a practice in real life? And what does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? You know, moment to moment. It's not a place that you arrive. It's a process. And you're continually, consciously, intentionally devoted to the practice of looking at what is most loving to me right now, what is in my highest good, and exploring false beliefs and ideas that keep you um, disconnected and in controlling intentions that create disconnection with, your, with others. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And if you think about how much time we spend teaching our children things, how little time we spend teaching them these things, which really are the foundation of all else. If right. they can't love themselves, if they can't love others, if they can't connect right. healthy way, right. the rest of it's all kind of superfluous, right? There's nothing. Exactly. That means everything, nothing. everything is relationships. Everything, everything is relationships. Yeah. And that can't be one thing that doesn't ride on that, except possibly that idea of just complete isolation, which is right. a wonderful thing as well. But yeah. <laughs> Yes, build a life on it. It's it's harder to build a life on. So on a lighter note, what is a, a song, a movie, or a book that you think has a great message about love and relationship? Well, I, I really do love this song called This Is Why I Love You by Major. Beautiful, beautiful song, beautiful voice, beautiful lyrics. And what really stood out for me when I first heard it was how he brought in how the reason that he can also love her is because he's loving himself. That was just beautiful to me because uh, like you, as I'm sure that you, you see, you look outside and you see there's a lot of uh, wounded material out there that <laughs> that perpetuating this uh, crippled version of love and uh, dependency and codependency. And uh, so this song was beautiful and it was just a, a wonderful bright light and I enjoyed listening to it. Yeah. I am really excited to hear that. And what I really liked is the fact that it's, it's also about a man. Yeah. And one of the posts I put out today talks about we need to have more examples of men supporting each other emotionally and mentally, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's great to have the, the male bonding concept is a wonderful thing, but to add that in is also a really powerful thing. And to hear that he loves himself so that he can love her. That's, that's a, that's a, beautiful yeah, definitely. Thing. I believe men are waking up and wanting to do their work too. <laughs> that's, I mean, I'm, I, we're counting on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, Victor, this has been so wonderful. Please tell us where um, the, people that are able to find this are going to be able to find you oh okay, so if you want to connect with me you can just uh, find me on social media my facebook is victor granville from facebook and on instagram uh victor.granville on uh, instagram and um yeah i'm pretty frequent on there send me a dm a private message uh, look at them read the many posts i've put up there and uh, and um yeah and look out for workshops that i do uh there's a lot of material I put out there. That's fantastic. I'm, I'm excited to see where your passion for this will take you in the future. I will post those two links down below in the information, or you can certainly get it through through DMing either one of us, and we can make sure that you guys can hook up. I am thrilled that I was able to spend this time with you, and just to get to know what you do a little bit better, really look forward, like I said, to seeing where this takes you in the future. Well, thank you so much, uh, Kimmy. I, again, really, really appreciate you inviting me here and uh, sharing my message. Uh, with your community it's been great happy to do it have a great rest of your day you too okay we survived let's go <laughs>